Hello, this is video 12B. We are in the second half of module 12 and we are talking about gases. Uh, in my last video, I was just about to do an example and I had to stop because my video is getting too long. So I'm gonna start by continuing on that example. This is example 12.2 and we are using Dalton's law of partial pressures. All okay. right, example 12.2 says, a chemist produces hydrogen gas in an experiment and collects that gas in the presence of water. So when you hear that phrase, collecting a gas in the presence of water, it means that water vapor or water gas, because the gas of water is water vapor, is going to be present. So not all of the gas that you collect is going to be, for example, hydrogen gas. It's gonna be hydrogen gas plus a little bit of water vapor. Okay, so the question asks, if the total pressure of gas collected was 1.115 atmospheres and the temperature was 26 degrees Celsius, what was the pressure of hydrogen gas collected? So let's write, write down what we know. This is example 12.2. And well, first we'll write down what we are looking for. We are looking for the pressure of hydrogen gas, H2, okay? And what do we know? Okay, we know the total pressure, which is written as P with a little subscript of capital T. The total pressure of gas collected was 1.115 atmospheres. And we know the temperature. The temperature was 26 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we're interested in finding out how, what the pressure is of the hydrogen that was collected, but we know that if it was collected in the presence of water, water vapor is also present. So we're gonna to have to take the total pressure of the gas collected and subtract from it the water vapor that was there in order to figure out the pressure of just the hydrogen gas, okay? So eventually we're gonna be using this, P total equals P of, hydrogen plus the P of water, H2O, or water vapor, and we're going to be solving for the partial pressure of hydrogen. So we're going to do P of hydrogen equals the total pressure minus the pressure present from the water vapor. Okay, so what is the pressure of the water vapor? Well, we know the temperature. The temperature is 26 degrees, and so we can use this table, and this table will be provided for you on the test, or just the exact values that you need. But this table tells us that at 26 degrees, the vapor pressure of water is 25.2 torr. So we can add that over here to the things that we know. The capital P of water would equal 25.2 torr. Okay, but in order to subtract that from the total pressure of the gas, we need to have our units be the same because we have atmospheres here and we have torr. So let's convert torr into atmospheres. 25.2 torr. We're gonna use the factor label method. So we'll put torr on the bottom because we want that to cancel out and we'll put atmospheres on the top. Now we know the ratio because we learned it in this module for every 1.00 atmospheres, that means 760 torr. So we'll be putting into our calculators 25.2 divided by 760. The torr will cancel out, so our units are gonna end up in atmospheres. And once we put that into our calculator, we get 0 0.0332 atmospheres. So that's the partial pressure of the water vapor that's present, okay? And remember, the reason that water vapor is present when you collect a gas in the presence of water is water is always evaporating. So water vapor is going to always be present because some of those little water molecules are escaping from the liquid form into the gas form. So the gas form of water or water vapor is therefore present. And how much of that is present depends on the temperature. The more you increase the temperature, as we learned in that last video too, 
the more water is vaporous present because as you increase the temperature of water, more will evaporate. I hope this is making sense. Just a little review. Maybe I spent too much time on it, but we'll keep going on with the problem now. Okay, so now we have the water pressure um, in atmospheres, and we can use this formula. So the partial pressure of hydrogen is going to be equal to the total pressure, which is 1.115 atmospheres, minus the partial pressure of the water vapor, which we found to be 0.0332 atmospheres. If we do that subtraction, we end up with 1.082 atmospheres. So that is the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas, taking out the partial pressure of the water vapor that's present. So that's how you use Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Let's erase this and learn some more. Okay, the next section of your book is called an alternative, let's see what it's called. An alternative statement of Dalton's Law. So we're gonna learn another way to apply Dalton's Law. And in order to be able to do that, we have to learn a new term, which is called the mole fraction. You can kind of think of mole fraction as the percentage of one gas compared to the total gases that are present, okay? So in, for example, in our atmosphere, there's nitrogen, there is obviously oxygen, there's some carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, um, there's argon and some other small amounts of other little gases like that. So the mole fraction of oxygen, you would take the number of moles in our atmosphere and divide it by the total number of moles of all of those gases mixed together. So that's why it's kind of like the percentage of, of oxygen present. Let's write it out. Mole fraction equals X, okay? That's how you write it. Capital X, and it's equal to the number of moles of a component or like the one gas that you're interested in, divided by the number of moles in the total mixture of gases. Okay, let's try an example with mole fraction. Example 12.3. This is on page 399. Page 399, example 12.3 says, a mixture of gases contains 3.0 moles of oxygen gas, 5.0 moles of nitrogen gas, and 1.0 mole of neon gas. What is the mole fraction of each component in the mixture? So we are looking for the mole fraction, capital X, for oxygen. Remember, oxygen is never just O, it's one of those diatomic molecules, so it's always O2. And we are looking for the mole fraction of nitrogen, also a diatomic molecule, so it's N2. And we are looking for the mole fraction of neon, capital NE. What do we know? We know the number of moles of each of those gases. So we know that there are 3.0 moles of oxygen. There are 5.0 moles of nitrogen. There is 1.0 mole of neon. So that's how many moles there are of each gas. Now, do you remember what moles actually means? I hope so. It's just an amount. It's just a number. Like dozen means 12. A mole means 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So it's just a very large number. So we have that many moles of oxygen um, atoms present, or actually they'd be oxygen molecules because it's two oxygens linked together. We have that many moles of nitrogen molecules. We have that many moles of neon atoms 
present. Okay, so moles is just a number. So, and then if we add the different moles for the different gases that are present, we can find the total number of moles in the mixture. So three plus five plus one equals 9.0 moles in the mixture. All right, now we can figure out the mole fraction for each one. X for O2 would equal 3.0 moles of oxygen divided by the total number of moles in the mixture, which is 9.0 moles. So the mole fraction for oxygen would be 0 0.33. The mole fraction for nitrogen would be 5.0 moles, because there are five moles of nitrogen, divided by the total number of moles, which was nine. So that equals 0 0.56. And then the mole fraction for neon would be 1.0 moles, divided by 9.0 moles, which equals 0 0.11, okay? And then of course, all of them together, when you add up the different mole fractions, they should add up to one. Kind of like percentages, right? So we're kind of looking at the percentage of the moles of oxygen, the percentage of the moles of nitrogen, the percentage of the moles of neon. If you add all those up together, you should get 100% of the gas or one whole. So they should add up to one. Okay, that is mole fraction. And then that new way to learn or apply Dalton's law, I will show it to you and then in my next video, I will have to do an example of it. So the new application for Dalton's law is that the partial pressure of one component is equal to its mole fraction times the total pressure of gases present. Okay, so P1 is equal to the partial pressure of, let's say, the first component, the X1 is the mole fraction of the first component, and then P capital T is the total pressure of all the gases that are present. So the total pressure of gas mixture. All right, and in my next video, I will do an example using this new equation. Aren't you glad you get to use three and a half by five inch note cards on your test this time? Because there are a lot of equations in this module. All right, I'll see you next time for an example.